God for one day, and I need your mercy, oh Lord, I need your grace, I need your mercy, and I need your grace, and I need your hand, leading the way. Jackson, come and help us tonight. Amen. Stephen, good to see you tonight, sir. It's been too long. Good to see Stephen Jackson. Tonight. You know, I couldn't help but think tonight as all the prayer requests were given out, how dependent we are upon the Lord. You know, and I'm so thankful that we have someone to take our needs to. When we need somebody to help us in our time of need, he's always there. He never leaves us or forsakes us. And hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's um, take the red book tonight. Let's turn to 129. Tell it to Jesus alone. Hallelujah. Joy's departed, tell it 
what shall be tomorrow. Tell it to Jesus alone. Oh, tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. There's no one such a friend or brother. Tell Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Have you sinned that two men's eyes are hidden? Tell it to Jesus alone. Oh, tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. There's no God, hallelujah. Amen. I'm thankful we can tell it to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's the only one that knows and cares and understands. Hallelujah. Praise God. Page 365. Hallelujah. Praise God. No, not one. <laughs> 365. Not an hour that he is not. 
and forsaken. No, not one, no, not one. Poor sinner, find that he would not take him. No, not one, no, not one. For Jesus knows all about our struggles, and he will guide till the day is done. Oh, there's not a friend like the Lord. No, not one, no, not one. Will he refuse us a home in heaven? No, not one, hallelujah. Oh, and Jesus knows all about our struggles, and he will guide till the day is done. Oh, there's not a friend like the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. I want to sing that chorus. He knows, he cares. Where you are, he's right there. He knows, he cares. Where you are, he's right there. He sees your heart. All your hidden, broken parts. Let him take you in his arms. He can heal your wounds and scars. Yes, He knows right where you are. Oh, He knows, He cares. Where you are, He's right there. He sees your heart. All hid and broken apart. Let Him take you in. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. You can be seated if you'd like tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I'm glad the Lord knows all about it, don't you? I heard one guy say once, um, you know, the difference between the church and the world. As a Christian, you always want a gap in between the world and the church. As long as there's a gap there, we're okay. And that's what we as Christians have a mentality of. Is, you know, as long as there's a little bit of separation and a little bit of difference, then we're okay. But the fact of the matter is the world is going that way as fast as it can. And the church world seems to be just as long as I can stay within a, a close proximity and not get too close, we're okay. But that's not what God says. Right. That's right. We have a foundation of our beliefs. We believe in the Bible. We put our faith and our trust in God and in His Word. And there's a lot of things that we need to go back to. We need to go back to an altar. We need to remember where we came from. We need to remember, like the preacher said Sunday night, you know, he gave a long list of uh, idolaters and liars and adulterers and all these things. And such were some of you. And we want to we wanna have that separation, but we need to go back to the basics of what the Bible says. And we need to we need to go back to the altar. We need to realize where we came from. So this is a song that we really, really like, and our kids have been singing it. And, uh, we practice it a little bit, but well, maybe one time. So bear with us. We need to get back to the basics of a life. A heart that is pure and a love that is blind. A faith that is fervently grounded in Christ. A hope that endures for all time. These are the basics. We need to get back to the basics of a life. wrong. Somehow we've drifted so far from the truth that we can't get back home. Where are the virtues that once gave us life? Where are the morals that govern can come every doubt. After all, man is a God. They say God is no longer alive. But I still believe in an old rugged cross. And I still believe there is hope for the Stay. 
is fervently grounded in Christ, a hope that endures for all time. These are the basics. We need to get back to the basics of life. Hallelujah. Oh, we need to get back to the basics of life. We need to get back to the basics of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, it's a good thing. Praise the Lord. Get back to the basics. A heart that is pure. Amen. Right? That's right. Praise God. Man, we're going to be looking at the book of Psalms tonight. That's where we're going to start. Probably a number of verses tonight that I'd like to read to you. Yeah. How many of you have heard the almost capital of Mississippi. It's what, it's what it's known as. The almost capital of Mississippi. The name of, of it is called Rodney, Mississippi. To understand the significance of the Mississippi River town, you've got to go back into history. Pre-American history. Early records show the settlement of Rodney, then known as as Pettit Gulf, began in 1798. And there are maps which carry the name back to 1715. Pettit Gulf is located on the Mississippi River in Mississippi, north of New Orleans, of course. And it had there kind of a gulf, kind of a port area that uh, made it very very popular for those traveling down the Mississippi River. It is believed that the Indians used this air, this particular spot also to cross the river. The name of the town was changed in 1814 to honor Judge Thomas Rodney. He was a territorial magistrate and it missed becoming the capital of Mississippi Territory by only three votes. Almost. Almost. The city of Rodney, Mississippi, it was host to many notable visitors, Andrew Jackson, Henry Clay, Zachary Taylor, they all came through there. Zachary Taylor uh, fell in love with uh, Rodney, Mississippi. He purchased a plantation there and um, called Cypress Grove Plantation. Although Rodney entertained some important political figures, one of its main own residents was one of the main people created a name for himself. His name is Dr. Holler Nutt. I know. Kind of nuts, isn't it? He was a native of Virginia, and he came to Rodney in 1815. But Dr. Nutt, he led the South into becoming the cotton kingdom of the world. His contributions were amazing into the field of, of growing cotton because the cotton seed of that time when they would plant cotton, they would lose about half of their crop to, uh, they would get destroyed because of rotting, and it would rot in the fields. So he began to do some extensive research and developed a strain of cotton that uh, prevented that and made it more resilient. Paul Nutt also, he improved on Eli Whitney's cotton gin by connecting the cotton gin to steam power, became a major piece of equipment for the cotton industry town prospered. Many locals became aware of the need for a college. So they built Oakland College in Rodney, Mississippi. 
It was in the 1840s and 1850s that Rodney was at its best. The days of the steamboat and cotton were at its peak. It was the busiest river port between New Orleans and St. Louis. It was that busy. The Natchez and the Robert E. Lee steamboats made Rodney one of their chief ports of call. There were a thousand permanent residents with several hundred visitors always in town. Rodney was a home to a large hotel with a ballroom, had two banks. One of them capitalized at a million dollars. In the 1850 census, census, excuse me, census, Rodney had at least 35 stores, was the home of the first opera house in the state. Citizens from Rodney saw plays usually seen only in Philadelphia and New York. The town had two new newspapers that were read continually, two others that were just kind of fringe newspapers. They had the Rodney Gazette, the Southern Telegraph, the Rodney Standard, the Rodney Telegraph. It was a, it was a booming town. By 1860, the town had 4,000 residents. It was a town that was prospering and was alive. Almost the capital of Mississippi. Trivia question, what is the capital of Mississippi? Very good, Brother Jonathan. You'll get a piece of candy. All right. Mississippi, almost the capital of Mississippi. Can you imagine that? Missed it by three votes. This town, this town was an amazing, booming town that was just uh, just really flourishing and it was because of the Mississippi River. The mighty Mississippi flowed by there, ships of these steamboats coming in there and bringing cargo and dropping it off and, and picking up and hauling farther down into New Orleans, bringing stuff back up from New Orleans up here, then to St. Louis, St. Louis back it was, it was a thriving metropolis, if you would, in that day. It's a, it had started its existence because it was on a river. It thrived because of the river. I want to talk to you tonight, if I could. Amen. Thank God for the river. Thank God for the river. Psalms chapter 46 and verse 1 is where we'll start reading. Psalms 46 and 1, thank God for the river. Have you ever been out to the Mississippi River? Isn't it amazing how big the Mississippi River is? It's it's an amazing, and uh, I kind of enjoy living on the river. Do you realize how many benefits we have because of the river? The benefits of right here, St. Louis, the river, and there's a lot of things that, that come our way because we live on a river. Psalms 46 and verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. Notice the river. The first three verses are very, very concerning verses written at a time when the city of Jerusalem had been besieged. Many commentaries believe it was by Sennacherib and the Assyrians that had surrounded the city, and they had, they had cut it off, and they, had, they was trying to besiege that city to starve them out, but, and, but they could not starve them out, and God brought about a victory for the people of Israel. But I want you to notice that even though all of this bad is happening, all of the bad is happening, God is our refuge of strength, a very present help in trouble, Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, 
Though the waters thereof roar and are troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Let me tell you what. Sounds pretty serious. Sounds pretty desperate. But he goes on and says, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of tabernacles of the most high. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. Amen. That river brings a peace in the midst of all of the upheaval. It brings a tranquility in the midst of all of the distress. That river brings a a calmness into a troubled time because of the river. The river. Amen. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. We can look and we can talk about the river. Because when I think about the river, amen, there's a lot of things that that come to my mind when we talk about the river. The river. Think about it. What is this river that that is being talked about? What is this river? I think we need to spiritualize it. We need to come and we need to take it in a spiritual view of this river. And think about yourself spiritually about the river. There's a number of verses in the Bible that deal with a river. Ezekiel chapter 47. If you look at verse 40, chapter 47 of Ezekiel verse 1, you find, you find the origin and the course of the river. Man, because it says, Afterward he brought me again into the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under from under, from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Notice there is the beginning of a river. Has any of you ever been to the beginning of the Mississippi River? Have you ever made a journey all the way up? And I believe it's in Minnesota where it's just a little bitty trickle of water where the Mississippi River begins. But it starts there. You would not imagine that a little trickle of water there could become a mighty Mississippi River here. Amen. But what that river flowing from the altar of God, a river, amen, the course of that river. When you read Ezekiel chapter 47, it tells you how that river is ever expanding, ever larger. It goes deeper and deeper and deeper. Until Ezekiel tells us that it was waters to swim in. Waters to swim in. The course of that river. But then you need to also look at the current of that river. And the benefits that it brings. That it washes down to us. The benefits of that river. Ezekiel chapter 47 tells us. Now when I had returned. Behold at the bank of the river were very many trees. On the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whither, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live whither the river cometh. And it shall come to pass that fishers shall stand upon it from Engedi, even until Eglam. They shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. But the miry places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fade. Neither shall fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. Do you hear the benefits of the river? Do you hear the benefits, amen, of being next to the river? Psalms chapter 1 and verse 3, amen. 
And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. Thank God for the river. Thank God for the river. Amen. When you read those verses, you read about the river's productivity. Amen. What it produces in our life. Let me tell you what, the river of God. Amen. It produces things in your life. Amen. You enjoy the grace of God. You enjoy, amen, the salvation of God. You enjoy the Spirit of God. You enjoy the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You enjoy the healing that comes because of the presence of God. Amen, it's important that we learn, amen, to live, amen, at the river. Amen, thank God for the river. Amen, the verse tells us not only of productivity, but of its perpetuity. Perpetuity. I knew I was going to do it. Perpetuity. That means, you know what it says? That it bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. It continues. It continues on. Did you ever stand at the river and think, where is all that water coming from? Where does it all come from? I mean, it just continues to flow, and it flows all year long. You think, surely somewhere, somewhere it's going to run out of water. Somewhere it's got to get exhausted. Sooner or later, all that water coming down, downstream and rolling on, surely it's got to end. Let me tell you what. Amen. The goodness of God and the blessings of God. Amen. They flow in our life like a river. Amen. The blessings of God and His mercy. Amen. Are made new in our life every morning. Amen. He comes and He pours His blessings out upon our life every day. Thank God for the river. Hallelujah. And that verse says, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. It's the prosperity of the river. The prosperity. Amen. You are where you are right now because of the prosperity of the river that you're planted beside. Amen. Because God has blessed you with the river. Amen. Because God blessed you with the river. Hallelujah. John 7 and verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast. Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, but Je- because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Amen. But this spake he of the Spirit. Amen. Can I tell you, thank God for the river. Amen. For every one of us that know the benefits of living next to the river. Amen. And having the river of God in our life. Thank God for the security and the blessings that it brings into our life each and every day. You're blessed because of the river. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice what it says there in Psalms. Their river, the streams whereof shall make glad. Do you really realize how blessed you are because of the river of God? That river that flows in your life. Bringing his blessings. Bringing his benefits. Bringing all of his goodness into your life. Thank God. Man, he supplies your life every day with his goodness is because of the river. Because of the river, your life is like a fertile plain. Your life is blessed because man, of the river. Because of the river, the blessings of God and the goodness of God are accessible in your life because of the river. Because it flows in your life. It flows in close, close proximity of your life. 
Amen. The river, exhaustless, continual. Amen. It pours out in your life. Because of the blessings of God and that river. Amen. It's like you are on the channel of God's presence and God's blessings and God's goodness in your life. Amen. It's like a highway. Have you ever stood there and watched all the barges go down the river carrying all of the supplies? It's like a, it's like a highway. And the river of God is like a highway in your life, bringing the blessings of God into your life, into your home, into your family, for your children. The blessings of God. Rodney, Mississippi, they enjoyed the blessings of a river. They enjoyed the blessings of having that river come down. It made their land fertile. It brought all the good things of the world to them. Things that most people would have never enjoyed, Rodney, Mississippi enjoyed. If it was something in the opera house all the way from New York, if it was something from some of the the latest news all the way from St. Louis, Some of the good things that were coming up from New Orleans, they enjoyed all of that, and they received all of that goodness. One day, something happened to Rodney, Mississippi. After, in the 1870s, when Rodney, Mississippi was at its peak, the Mississippi River slowly started changing its course and moving away from Rodney, Mississippi. Rodney, Mississippi did not move. They didn't follow the river. But when the river changed its course, Rodney, Mississippi died. Rodney, Mississippi today is called a ghost town. The one that was almost the capital of Mississippi. But when the river moved, Rodney did not move. And Rodney died. The river traffic was gone. All of the people coming in on the river boats left. All the business that the river industry brought to them, they packed up and they moved out. All the churches closed their doors. Rodney, Mississippi is a ghost town. It's dead. If you don't stay by the river, you'll die. If you don't stay by the river, you will die. You got to have the blessings of God. You've got to have the good things of God in your life. You need the benefits that the river brings to you. Amen. But you've got to live close to the river. Amen. You've got to be by the river. You've got to enjoy the blessings of God. I believe the name of the town is called Grayville, Illinois. It's over there on the Indiana-Illinois line. It's, just a, was a, it's a small town. always was a really small town. But Grayville, one day, they they located right on the Wabash River, I believe it is. The Wabash comes down through there, and it made it into a thriving little town. One spring, the Wabash flooded. While it was in its flood stage, it cut a new channel. And when the floods went down, the river had changed its course. Grayville, Illinois is a dead town. You go to Grayville, Illinois, and they say there's, it's muddy, it's marshy, where that, it's just stale, stagnant water that, that sits there. They said the town has a smell of stagnant and stale water. You know why? Because the river's gone. Some of us, spiritually, if we're not careful, When the river leaves us, when the river leaves us, we'll die. You've got to have the river. That's why I say, thank God for the river. 
thank God for the river. And you don't realize the blessings that you've enjoyed right now because of the river. Oh man, if you could only see the anointing that you have on your life, it's because of the river. I'm tell you what, when the river's gone, you ain't going to have that anointing anymore. Man, if you don't stay close to the river, you're going you're gonna to lose all of that. All the blessings that you've seen in your family, all the good things that's come into your life. Hey man, if you don't stay close to the river, you'll lose all that. Hey man, you've got to have the river of God. Hey man, you can say, well, we've got, I'm going to go to church. Hey man, but I'll tell you, you have to have the river. You have to have a river. Hey man, if the river leaves us, if the river leaves the church, hey man, if the river's not flowing... And you might have closed the doors up. And because it takes the river. If you're not careful, you'll find yourself getting farther and farther from the river. And all the benefits, all the good things, all the good things that come because of the Spirit of God and the good things of God and the goodness of God in your life. Amen. Stand with me if you would. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus. First of all, let me ask you. Do you realize how much you need the benefits and blessings of a river of God in your life? Do you realize, man, what good the Spirit of the Lord can do in your life? you'd surrender your life to the Lord today and let that river of God flow into your life amen I believe that it can change your life it would bring into your life the blessings that you have long missed in your life if the river comes into your life the river of God flows into your life and you'll receive benefits of His mercy, His grace, His faithfulness. And you'll know the joy of God. You'll know the peace. Amen. you'll find that the, the river, the streams thereof will make you glad. You'll find that your life will be pr- productive. You'll find that the blessings of God will be endless. I mean, you'll find that every morning, I mean, God's faithfulness is good to you and true to you. Hallelujah. You need that river in your life. You need the river. Church people, can I tell you tonight that thank God for the river. And you don't realize how much you depend on the river until it's gone from you. I've got to encourage you. Stay close to the river. Stay close to the river. Dear Lord Jesus, God, we ask you, Lord, that you speak to our heart tonight. Speak to our heart tonight, Lord. God, we can't do it in our flesh. We can't do it, God, because of our talents. We can't do it because of our abilities. God, we can't do it, Lord, God, without the presence and the Spirit of God flowing into our life. God, oh God, if we don't have a move of the Spirit of God in our life, God, we're going to die. God, we're going to die. God, we're going to lose all the good things of our life. We're going to lose all the blessings of our life. God, we've got to have the river of God flow in our life today. Thank God for the river. Thank God for the river. Hallelujah. Heads bowed, if you would, for just a moment. Amen. You're here today and you say, Brother David, I need the blessings of God in my life. I need the life that comes from the blessings of God flowing into my life. I need... I need to know, amen, the peace and the tranquility that can come into my life just by the river of God flowing into my life. 
and bringing his blessings, bringing his goodness, bringing his grace into my life. I need God. I need him right now. Hallelujah. If you find yourself in that condition, would you lift your hand and say, Brother David, pray with me tonight. Amen, I need God. Hallelujah. Is there somebody else? Somebody else? Hallelujah. Yes, I need that. I need that. I need the blessings of God. I need God flowing into my life today. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. When we come to this altar tonight, church, I just want to just want to tell you. Amen. You need to look over at the river and say, thank God for the river. Thank God for the river. Thank God for what it's bringing into my life. Thank God for His Spirit. Thank God for the goodness of God that's flowing into my life. Because it's bringing all of this goodness. All of God's blessings. Hallelujah. Church, let's come if we would. Amen. Let's come and let's seek the Lord. Amen. Seek the Lord tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Each and every one of us, let's come. Hallelujah.